Last week I went backpacking in the Highlands of Scotland and if you've seen the video, you'll have noticed that the weather was pretty biblical. Not only was it a good test for me, both physically and mentally, it was a really good test for all this gear. So this isn't all the gear that I took. However, there's a few things that I want to show you that worked really well for me, as well as one or two items that, that did let me down a little bit. Scotland was absolutely beautiful, but Mother Nature threw some of the worst weather at us. In fact, I've never seen quite as much rain. Keeping myself dry and my gear dry was the main priority, really. And I kept all of my gear in the Atom Packs Mo EP50. Now this is pretty weather resistant anyway. However, I did put a rain cover on it um, so I could actually stick uh, items of clothing and stuff inside this stretchy area and they remain dry. So I've been using this pack now for quite a while and it's really comfortable. However, with it only being 45 liters, that did have an influence on some of my gear choices. The pack was incredibly comfortable throughout the three days, so really happy with that choice. So when I originally packed the night before, this isn't the tent that I had in my pack. Um, I originally chose the Durston X Mid one person. However, the weather forecast was for high winds and a lot of rain, and I hadn't tested it in those conditions before. And so I decided to swap it out for the Terra Nova Southern Cross one, which I, I had tested in some pretty tough conditions, and I knew that it was up to the job. There was sufficient room in there for me and all my gear. The vestibule's massive, uh, and as it was raining most of the time, I had to do most of my cooking in here as well. The second night we camped, we got caught in a storm, and I've never seen as much rain. Uh, it was biblical, shall we say, uh, and the tent never skipped a beat. No leaks at all, and didn't budge in the wind. Very happy with this tent. So the weather on the first day was wasn't too bad actually. Uh, all I needed to keep the wind off, to keep me warm and the light showers was this uh, Rab wind stopper. I'm not actually sure what model it is. See if it says on here. Nope. So wind shirts are a pretty recent thing to me. I've always worn fleeces and mid layers in the past, but uh, this is a much lighter weight material. Still very breathable and it's much more comfortable for me to wear. and I don't overheat so much. But eventually the heavens did open and I needed to dig out the waterproofs. So a few days before my trip, I headed over to the Mountain Outfitters warehouse um, and I bought some new Rab downpour trousers. Um, these have got waterproof zips on them. They're really easy to get in and out of, um, very comfortable. And they kept all of the water out on the lower section. I've got loads of waterproof jackets, but a lot of them are, are really lightweight materials and I was expecting heavy downpour, so I wanted something a little bit more durable and more waterproof. So while I was at the outlet, I picked up this Rab Chroma jacket. So this is Gore-Tex Pro. It's um, their most waterproof jacket, I believe. Uh, very durable. It's a little heavier though than the other stuff that I've got, but um, this took a right beating and it never let a drop in. All of the, the zips are waterproof. Um, it's a very robust, um, outer shell. The hood was brilliant and you can adjust it so it fits really nicely. I was really impressed with it. It's actually designed for skiing and higher alpine ascents but it did a job in the Scottish Highlands. So I didn't take a fleece mid layer, I did have a little Rab vaporised jacket, I haven't brought it with me today but mainly under the shell I just wore a long sleeve base layer. So it was either this long sleeve Rab one or the the new Messner one, which we've just uploaded onto the website this week. As you probably know, I use Squarespace for my website. I'd like to thank them for sponsoring the video today. So I'm pretty sure that everybody's heard of Squarespace by now. They are the place to go. If like me, you want to build a website of your own, but you've got no idea when it comes to coding or web design or anything like that. They've got loads of different ready-made templates that you can customize by adding different photos, adding text of your own, and then within a couple of hours, you can build a website from scratch. The list of features is growing all the time. You can use your Squarespace website for building your shop, um, collecting donations for your favorite charity, um, setting up a gallery for your wedding photography business. You name it, you can create a website for it using Squarespace. I use it mainly for selling the Messner merchandise, 
as well as promoting my YouTube videos. There's even a Squarespace app so you can run your website on the move. So if you want to have a go at building a website of your own, then click the link in the description below or head over to squarespace.com forward slash Paul Messner. You'll get a totally free trial, so you've got absolutely nothing to lose. And then when you're ready to go live, you'll get 10% off your first purchase. So moving on to the first bit of gear. It was good, but not perfect. So these are my Solomon mid hiking boots. I'm not sure what the exact model is. They are Gore-Tex lined. They were really comfortable throughout the whole walk. No blisters, slips or trips. However, they did produce a few little leaks. So as always um, with Gore-Tex boots, I find that eventually they do sort of wet out and you know, water will get in. And so my feet did get a little bit wet. Not massively so, but when I was hanging around camp and I changed my socks and stuff, I did put a uh, little uh, Ziploc bags over my socks to, to keep them dry for when I was back in the tent. So speaking of time inside the tent, my sleep system was absolutely brilliant. The Thermarest Neoair X Therm in wide. I've had people telling me to get one of these for years and I've always shied away from it because of the price, but I finally bit the bullet and this is by far the most comfortable and warm sleeping pad that I've ever used. In hindsight, I should have just got this in the first place. Now, as I mentioned in my video, I'm normally a quilt man through and through, but I decided to take a sleeping bag and I went with the Rab Alpine 600. I was expecting the really cold and wet weather and it's nice sometimes to just get yourself wrapped up and cocooned in a sleeping bag. And I did use it that way on the first night. Second night, I just opened it up and used it as a quilt still, but it still did a job, kept me really warm and the uh, hydrophobic down, um, even though it was really wet conditions, the bag stayed dry and well lofted. The final part of my sleeping system was the pillow that I used. I'll show you that in a minute after we've had a look at my jacket. So for mooching around camp and just keeping warm, I had this Rab stretch down hoodie. Uh, again, I picked this up from the outlet when I got these waterproofs. Um, this really comfortable really warm and packs down very small. It's got a Pertex quantum coating, so it is, let's say, light showerproof, but you don't want to be getting your down stuff wet. When it came to bedtime, I just turned my stuff sack inside out. So this has got a nice soft finish on it. This is the Thermarest pillow stuff sack. Then the down jacket went in there. This inside layer protects your down jacket from my sweaty head. Just cinch it up and you've got a really comfortable pillow. So after some tough hiking, I got really good sleep. This is my Atom Packs Roo, which is my bum bag. So I did keep this for all my camera gear and snacks and stuff like that. Again, this is weatherproof, but you know, when the really heavy rain came down, some water did get in here. You are better off putting your stuff inside a Ziploc bag or some other sort of waterproof stuff sack. Next bit of gear that proved invaluable was my Garmin InReach Mini. There were loads of times where we didn't have any sort of signal uh, for mobile phones. So that meant I was able to contact home at all times and let everyone know that we're okay and safe. <laughs> Although I didn't tell Joe about the thunder and lightning that we were camping in. I think if she'd have known that, she'd have got less sleep than I did. Cook set. I used my Storming Norman cone. It's such a shame that you can't get these anymore. If you ever see one on eBay, just buy it straight away. Really lightweight, and no matter what the conditions, this just always works. And it's also incredibly sturdy so even in the strongest of winds when there's some water in here this is going nowhere i was only having dehydrated meals so all i needed to do was boil water and this performed brilliantly honorable mention to my socks i was using bridgedale socks i took three pairs of those um, so i've always had some dry socks to to change into really comfy and no blisters a couple more things to to look at so we've got my Nalgene bottles, these are superb for carrying little things like 
or powdered milk in this one so I could have a decent cereal breakfast. This one's got sugar in for my coffees. Um, you know, these, these never leak, they're incredibly strong uh, and they're great for carrying all sorts of little bits and bobs. Last off was my B3 water filter. Now this was brilliant up until the last day. There were loads of places to pick up water and this was great for filtering it out. However, on the last day it did start to clog up a little bit and, and it was quite tough to, to squeeze the water out. There isn't really an effective way of back flushing it on the trail. So um, for multiple day trips, I might actually look at another filter. Although I do love this you know, for ease of use. And it's the first time I've ever had any problems with the flow rate. Everything's pretty clear in the Cairngorm, so I was surprised when it started to clog up a bit. So one last mention for a bit of gear that goes on every camping trip with me. The GoPro Hero 10. This camera performed absolutely superbly. I always take two with me in case one smashes or I want multiple camera angles. Considering how bad the conditions were for the three days, the footage that you can get from this camera is superb. The audio, the image quality. I couldn't make those kind of videos without my GoPro. One secret weapon though to good audio is the Wind Slayer. So this goes over the top of your GoPro. It's just like a foam sponge, but it cuts out all of that hissing sound that you get from wind. Um, so it makes your audio very good considering the conditions. I take two or three of the covers as well because when they get wet, the audio starts to get a little bit muffled. So take one off, wring it out, dry it out a little bit in a pocket and then it's good to go in an hour or two when the other one's wet through. So one final thought when it comes to the gear, all of this stuff, it worked perfectly for me. However, Dan and Andy, they had completely different stuff to me, yet their gear worked for them. So just because something works for one person doesn't mean it's right for you. So make sure you do your research and your homework to make sure you get the best gear for your needs.